Hey, what's up everyone? Today I'm gonna go through the complete install guide to building a Hackintosh. So first I wanna do an overview of the hardware that I've got here. Uh, the motherboard that I'm using is the Gigabyte GA EP45UD3P. It's important that you have that motherboard. And uh, also the UD3L model does work. All right, the next thing I wanna tell you about is the uh, CPU. You gotta make sure that the CPU uh, does virtualization so the uh, this particular CPU is a E8400. It's a dual core processor. It's three gigahertz. So um, the Q8200 I found out doesn't have virtualization, so it doesn't work with the with the Hackintosh. All right. So next we have the graphics card, which is the 9800 GT, and uh, I know that the 9500 GT works with this, and also the uh, GTS 250 by Nvidia. All three of those cards uh, will work with this Hackintosh. Next, we have the hard drives and the optical drives. The DVD burner has to be SATA. It's important that it is SATA. IDE drives, uh, parallel ATA will not work in here, so it has to be SATA drives, as well as the hard drives. Uh, any size will work, 500 or a terabyte or two terabytes, whatever it is, you can use any um, SATA hard drives. So the next thing we're gonna get into now is uh, booting up the machine and setting up the BIOS. All right, so now we're gonna set up the BIOS and we have our newly configured thumb drive here with the EFIX fix on it. And so basically plug it into your USB, fire up your machine, and you're gonna wait for the uh, uh, startup logo for your BIOS. And once it starts up, you press delete and go ahead and press it a couple of times to make sure that it's gonna go into the BIOS settings. All right, so now we're in the BIOS and what we're gonna do is go through the first setting. There isn't anything in here. Uh, if everything's set to default, you should leave it alone. There's nothing that you need to set in here. We can just go through and take a look how everything's set to auto. And uh, you can press escape to go on to the standard CMOS features. And you can adjust the time if you need to. Um, all of the hard drives here are listed and the optical drives and you can leave those alone. So next that you're gonna go to the drive A option and you're gonna set this to none because we don't need a floppy disk drive. And under halt on, you can set it to no errors. And we're pretty much done with that setting. We can go on to the advanced BIOS features and the hard disk boot priority. Here's the uh, thumb drive that we inserted and we wanna move this all the way up to the top. And to do that, you do plus, hit the plus key and move it all the way to the top so that it boots to this thumb drive first. Okay, and then you can also make your uh, Hackintosh hard drive, your main hard drive. Mine happens to be a, a terabyte and you can tell here because it says 1000, that's my terabyte. And you can make it the second one since I know that that's gonna be my main boot drive after I'm all done with this. So we can hit escape and under quick boot, you'll leave at disabled fir first boot device. We wanna change it to hard disk drive as well as the second one. And the third one, we can disable it and just hit disabled. All right, so next we want to uh, leave password check. The HDD smart capabilities, we can disable that. Leave the rest of this here alone. So no execute, CPU, C2 is uh, enabled, enabled, and disabled. And then uh, the CPU thermal monitor is enabled. Virtualization technology is enabled. And uh, under init first, uh, display. We want to change this to PEG. This is the uh, the PCI Express graphics. All right. So we're done with this setting. We can exit out and go on to integrated peripherals. All right. So here's one of the important parts you got to change, and it's the uh, SATA RAID AHCI mode, and we want to change this to AHCI. And you can leave this uh, disabled leave everything else enabled. You can leave it all alone and under onboard SATA IDE device, leave that enabled. 
and change the uh, control mode to AHCI and the serial port and parallel port we're going to disable this and for USB keyboard function we want to enable that and the USB mouse function we want to enable that as well alright so we're done with this one we can move on to the next under power management uh, we pretty much leave everything alone and uh, the HPET mode we need to change this to 64 bit and everything else you can just leave alone alright so the uh, plug and play uh, IRQ assignments you can just leave that to auto so we don't need to do anything other in there so we can exit out of that PC health status you can leave all of that alone you don't need to do anything in there okay so now that we have our bio settings set we're gonna reboot into our newly made bootloader okay so now that we are in our boot manager we're presented with our hard drives that we have on this computer and the first one is the Mac OS X install DVD that's the one that we're gonna click on don't touch any of these other ones so go ahead and press enter on that and now it should boot up okay so now that we are at our welcome screen we're gonna choose English and then it's important that we first go to utilities and we do disk utility because we need to format our hard drive here are the other hard drives that I have installed on this computer I do not want to touch this and this is very important make sure that you don't touch any of these drives if you're a little worried that you might unplug the drives before you do all, any of this so the drive that I want to install on is the one terabyte and I'm gonna go ahead and erase and I'll call it the main and we want to leave it at Mac OS X journaled so once we have that set click on erase erase one more time now that it's partitioning the reason why we do this is because we want Snow Leopard to recognize a Mac hard drive we can go ahead and close that now once we hit continue and agree you'll see that this main drive that I just created can now uh, accept Snow Leopard we're gonna hold, go ahead and click on customize and we'll add on Rosetta and QuickTime 7 we can leave everything else just the way it is click on OK and now we're installing so that's pretty much it it's gonna take about a good 30 minutes to install all right so after you've rebooted and you're presented with the screen you gotta make sure you press a key uh, to bring the bootloader up and you want to choose your newly created snow leopard drive because it defaults to the install DVD and you don't want to do that again so just go to the main press any key to go into here and press enter and now we are booting to the hard drive with snow leopard on it and the last thing we got to do actually is install the EFIX onto the hard drive and that way we don't have to keep using the thumb drive uh, that you originally installed the EFIX on alright so once again we're back on the EP45 UD3P installer version 3 download the installer now we're at the install process so the only difference is that now we're going to change the location and choose the main drive click on install we will shut down and unplug the thumb drive uh, if you have any questions 
post them up on the uh, comments box and hopefully I can uh, answer them for you, especially if you got questions about hardware. All right, thanks for watching. Peace.